Now, Pakistan has revived its attack on India, both along the line of control as well as by way of infiltration of terrorists into Jammu and Kashmir. This aggression coincides with the Hamas attack on Israel. The question then arises is, on whose behest is Pakistan acting? Why has the Hamas terrorist attack triggered it? And uh, who is it that is set to gain from the increased aggression along the Western Front of India? Let's start this conversation. Major General Gigi Dwedi on the telecast with me. So, the situation that we see on line of control, where up until the last three years, there had been no ceasefire violation. And then suddenly, as the war gets triggered with the Hamas terrorist attack in Israel, we see a parallel being drawn, at least being tried to be drawn by the Pakistanis along the line of control. What does this indicate? Well, Mega, we need to take a larger perspective of the Kashmir issue as far well as Pakistan is concerned. You know, this uh, issue is central to Pakistan national policy. And uh, you see every forum, a uh, Kashmir issue is flogged by its political and military leadership. Therefore, I would say that this uh, ceasefire, which was in uh, three years back in 21, was just a tactical pause. There is no change in Pakistan's strategy of proxy war. And I call it proxy war having served on the LOC for quite some time. And incidentally, I'm speaking from Kashmir Valley. I'm on a visit here and give you some personal perspectives. First and foremost, Pakistan always looks at an opportunity to get maximum mileage from the Kashmir issue, both internationally and domestically. You rightly brought out that now the Arab, the Israeli and Hamas war is on and Pakistan we would like to play to the Islamic gallery on the international forum. So therefore, they would like to rake up the issue and also try and uh, activate the line of control. That is point number one. Secondly, you know, anyone who visits the uh, valley today, you know, there is a sea and sky difference in last three years. The kind of normalcy that has come in, you see the kind of prosperity and uh, the kind of investment that is coming in. Right now, I was at Kulmark, the amount of tourists that are you know, around here. So this all is uh, not palatable to Pakistan because moment the Kashmir issue, uh, India is able to handle, they, it will lose a very major trump card. Point number three, the, is right now in, inside Pakistan, there is a turmoil, there is a total instability as far as the political you know, spectrum is concerned. And the army would like to ensure that it is always center stage and therefore activation of the line of control is very much to the interest of both Pakistan army and the uh, Pakistan politicians. So in summation, I would say that uh, LSE activation it has to be linked in the larger perspective in the larger what is going on in the global stage and especially in the Middle East. Secondly, it is okay. to be linked up what is inside Pakistan. Okay. And thirdly, okay. the normal right. that has returned to the valley. Okay. Kuldeep Koda, former DGP of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, also on the telecast with me. Now, Kuldeep, in a situation where it has been calm for the last three years, there had been a ceasefire agreement that had been signed between India and Pakistan. And a situation where Pakistan at this point of time is in its own turmoil. There is no food, there is no gas, there is no fuel, there is a, a recession that is, that is being faced by Pakistan, a funds crunch that is being witnessed by Pakistan. So obviously the funding coming in by the Chinese side, the funding that is provided for arms and ammunition, uh, obviously, then arming the Pakistani army along the border is, is another headache that has been taken by the Chinese. Uh, the question is, uh, why now? You know, uh, uh, you are very rightly pointed out why Pakistan is trying to increase the infiltration activities at this point of time when the Middle East, uh, the war in Gaza is uh, quite active. Uh, there are a few reasons and uh, one of the main reasons is that Pakistan has been always trying to link Palestine issue with Kashmir issue, though there are not many takers for this except for countries like uh, Turkey or maybe 
some other die hard uh, close associate of pakistan but generally the islamic communities the islamic countries have rejected this idea but still pakistan is not giving up linking palestine issue with the kashmir issue that there are similar issues the way uh, palestinians are uh, uh, you know in their opinion suffering same way kashmiris are suffering and uh, they will always now try to activate kashmir terrorism to show the international community that kashmir has also a problem and it needs to be dealt on priority the way palestine needs to be t- t- uh, tackled on priority the second thing as already pointed out is that the terrorism levels have been low the people are realizing the dividends of peace they are growing the tourism as the other panelists pointed out the tourism is growing development is taking place at an unprecedented level and people are realizing the fruits of uh, peace and tranquility inside and uh, the people generally are now uh, they 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 are now trying to give up the links with the separatists and terrorists and other overground workers so this is uh, the, all this is happening which is to the total dislike of pakistan so they will try and ensure that the pot of terrorism keeps on boiling though maybe at a slow pace so these few reasons are there which has prompted pakistan to increase the terrorist activities to launch infiltration uh, from across the border okay. but okay but our forces are very vigilant and they have been dealing with it very successfully and the five terrorists were killed in kupwara sector in machil area and uh, they are going to meet the same fate in case of any such other attempt as far as the funding is concerned pakistan has been always trying to misuse the funds the earlier the funds which were coming to pakistan from us to deal with talibans they were diverting a part of it for terrorism in kashmir same way when china is now funding them it is their in their dna to misuse any international help they receive though they are themselves but, but in but the poverty. chinese are giving the funds to pakistan to aggravate the attack along the line of control and sending in these infiltrators a- a- into pakistan that's that's absolutely. that's the absolutely. key reason why there is funding arms and ammunition there are chinese military bases the cpec that is being created along the line of control and into pa- pakistan occupied kashmir by the by the pakistanis and the chinese sumit so, quickly getting a response from you with regards to we thinking about funding and united states of america had until recently been giving billions and millions of dollar to the pakistanis then we had the world bank we had the imf we also see the saudi arabians also giving money to the pakistanis now uh, when it is a well established fact that this funding these resources go into spreading terrorism these infiltration bits that have only increased in the last few weeks uh, why aren't uh, counter actions being taken by the countries you see mega ji thank you very much for having me on your show there are a couple of reasons to it the first and the most important reason is festival of jihad going you know internationally and the core jihadis cannot limit out of it so pakistan has to participate in this international jihad which is going so if something is happening in the middle east pakistan cannot be seen and that's point number 1 point number 2 and the most important thing that we had we had intel that in next 20 25 days we can expect a big time ceasefire violation from pakistan and loc and ib again the intel has proved right there are ceasefire violations in loc and ib yesterday there's a video of which i even tweeted wherein a pakistani ranger with a code name mudassar is talking to his counterpart and saying saab jaisa aapne keh diya we have opened the we are firing on the indians and we expect them to retaliate back what do they expect when the indians will retaliate back they, they launch attacks from the civilian areas when the civilian casualties will happen they will say allah mar diya i mean that is the that is the usual tactic they use again the movement of 5000 troops the movement of artillery division happened in around the loci we have been talking on it on news x motors positions have been put in put in the civilian areas we have been talking about it and most important thing yesterday there are reports there are at least two chinese officers which are which were also involved in coordinating this point number 4 after after you know pakistan supplied ammunition to ukraine war they have got money they have around a billion dollars or more which they have got from that now this ammunition is available to all the jihadi networks on dark web moreover that this money is being used whenever pakistan gets money they will activate the loc they were not activating the loc because they never had the money now the money for the arms has come the from money from the dark web is coming so they activating and fifth important thing which happened today morning a big chinese aircraft carrier has moved to the state of taiwan there has been a larger build up in fujian of chinese artillery 
big troop movement has happened to Fujian. China is trying to keep India busy with this proxy Pakistan, trying to flare up LOC. In the main, on, on, the, on the context, we can expect some inclusion or some action to happen from China on LAC as well. So with, with its consolidation of troops and aircraft carriers, carrier in the state of Taiwan, and you see Pakistan exactly activating and you know unilaterally making the ceasefire, and what they expect when we'll retaliate, they'll have the people that today we have at least seven rangers dead, we have five terrorists who are sent to one way ticket to hell, and many more Pakistanis have died. Their three launch pads are gone, their two, two posts are gone. But what Pakistan is interested in civilian casualties. And there's one more angle to it. The Pakistan army is a depleting stock. By doing this, they are trying to reinforce their, you know, Marthe Mujahid concept in the, you know, uh, in the Awam of Pakistan. PML, Nawaz Sharif has come. They don't want Nawaz to be seen, seen strong and calling the shots. You know, people were talking Nawaz will broker a peace with India and he is a person who can get peace. They have shattered their hopes. And the last and the most important thing is they are doing it on the Chinese behest. Yeah. How come Pakistan, you know, uh, unilaterally breaking the ceasefire and Chinese armada is moving to the state of Taiwan. What, are, what is the Chinese artillery doing in Fujian? Why they have moved a big battalion, couple of battalions to Fujian? Fujian fair is enough, fair enough. Taiwan. Obviously, the game that the Chinese are playing with the Indians is also being replicated with the United States of America. Keep America busy with the Ukraine war. Keep America busy with Israel and thereby having an, having an opening in the Indian Ocean region, allowing for these transgressions that continue to take place, allowing for its chests and the warships and the vessels to then patrol and even transgress into the maritime territories and even take control and invade them. So, Major Dwedi, what's the solution? How, do, how, do, how should India tackle it? Mega, I think we need to view the whole thing from the, you know, two lenses. One is the purely from our domestic and regional and second is from the international relations point of view. I just did an article today for first post on the Middle East and what is India's interest and how it is being played out. Coming firstly to our own region, please understand that uh, Pakistan has been at proxy war for the last four decades and it has not actually lowered the guard, only the tactics have changed. This year, in fact, for the last 10 months, you see the south of Peer Punjab are very active in the area of Gajari and Punch. We had at least three major encounters that was to south of Peer Punjab. And now the focus is back into the north and, uh, you know, we had two major encounters in north of Peer Panjal and more so the weather is now, winters are coming. They would like to push in as many foreign terrorists as possible. And very interesting point is that this year, the casualty of foreign terrorists have been four times the regional, the homegrown terrorists. That shows that the, the whole movement is losing steam as far as the valley is concerned. So Pakistan would like to push in as many foreign terrorists as possible to keep the pot boiling. Now, when we look at the larger perspective, see, China and Pakistan are in total collusion, and I have served as defense attaché in China, so I can say with a certain amount of conviction that today the interests are very much synchronized, especially when you talk of BRI. And just last week, major BRI conference were held and in, in China, and this is actually a signature project of Xi Jinping. And this BRI is not only ending up in Gawada, now they want to take it up right into Afghanistan and they would like to counter the India's initiative, that is the India Middle East uh, Europe corridor and they are very concerned. So how they can activate is by distracting India, by activating the line of control and also by ensuring that they keep uh, the interest of the global quality on to Middle East so that both its friend uh, Russia, their focus is off Ukraine and also focus of the West uh, Pacific, more yeah. so in South China, East China Sea. So therefore, we okay. need to link up these two in perspective. And I can only say that China and Pakistan are at a game. India needs to be very, very cautious. And we can't lower our guard because as far as Pakistan army and Pakistan politics concerned, Kashmir issue has to be kept on the boil. Its solution is not in the interest of Pakistan polity or the Pakistan military. Okay. Kuldeep Koda, then again the question arises is that uh, do we await a Pulwama-like attack in Kashmir or should we play on the aggressive? We have uh, conducted surgical strikes three times on Pakistan. Uh, should we be playing on the defensive this time? 
Absolutely not. Uh, defensive approach is no solution. We have seen in the past that uh, the proactive reaction to any pa development on the Pakistan side or from the Chinese side gives us dividends and that has resulted in deterrence in the past also, whether it's the uh, Uri strikes or the Balakot strikes. It, it, it definitely put Pakistan in check. But the point is that uh, this time after the G20 success and the global role which India is assuming and which is increasing every day and also uh, looking at the fact that US is increasingly seeing India as uh, the biggest asset against the Chinese expansionist policy and their, uh, and their, uh, their military intuitions in the, uh, in the Pacific and other areas. The they, they Chinese are uh, very keen that India has to be kept in check and they are using Pakistan also in the process because of the Pakistan's conflict with India on Kashmir. So India has to be always prepared on problems on the two fronts, uh, both Pakistan and China. Okay. And uh, we are adequately preparing for it. So we don't have to be taken off guard and add to it the role of the uh, politicians within Kashmir. Uh, who are who are pro-separatist leanings? They have started raking up the Palestine issue and asking the Kashmiris to come on the roads to demonstrate in favor of Palestine. But the entire idea is at the behest of Pakistan yeah. that they let the people come out and the peace and tranquility and the stone patting which has stopped since last four years that should resume as because that provides a ground for further escalation in the terrorist activities. So it is an all combined thing. So internally, you have to take strong action against those trying to incite violence or trying to activate their linkages with the separatists and terrorists. And on the outer front, we have to be proactive. And already, it is becoming more and more clear to Pakistan that if they try to launch any misadventure, uh, the way the Panama incident happened, as you mentioned, India will get it back in, in much more uh, 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 with, with much more deterrence and much more uh, okay, uh, uh, problems than the Balakot created for them. Right. So, so right. India has Absolutely. to respond very actively and uh, uh, give, okay. pay, okay. pa make, pay Pakistan a heavy price for animation and nature. Okay. Sumit, then uh, uh, we've seen that the Ladakh Council elections were a smooth affair. Uh, there is likelihood uh, that the Jammu and Kashmir assembly polls are then going to take place in 2024, maybe right before the Lok Sabha elections. Is that also a cause for the Pakistanis to increase their aggression by way of infiltration as well as the ag 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 aggression that we see on the line of control? You see, Megaji, there are five points. Here. The point number one is we have put a big screen in Karen, Karen sector. And you know, there is a part of Karen which is in India and a part of Karen is in Pakistan. Now, Pakistanis who are coming to the Karen the the tourists have increased four times or five times they want we are showcasing the development there which is a typical part of psychops now we are putting more screens there those screens have become the biggest pain in the wrong side for pakistan i don't want to use the word so that's point number one point number two is with more and more investment coming with kashmir normalizing they don't want it to normalize point number three they see palestine as an excellent opportunity where the world's attention is di you know diverted now, U.S. has two fronts. It has to manage Middle East, it has to manage Russia-Ukraine conflict. China sees it as a window. Pakistan is the proxy which activates. Now, you incidentally have to look at one other point. You look at the ceasefire violations. At the same time, there's a Chinese ship which has docked where? Which has docked in Sri Lanka. So, see the correlation here. And if you look at last uh, 12 days, three, uh, three Pakistan missile tests have done. So, uh, the Abaji, Ababil, that didn't work well, but the other two have worked well for them. So if you synchronize all these activities, they are trying to do it. And as far as the preemptive strikes are concerned, Indian Army keeps on doing preemptive strikes. You know, Balakot and Uri was a reactive strike, which we have to report. So when we do preemptive strikes, we don't have to report anything. I can tell you right now, Tangdar, you know, opposite Nila Valley, they, we have Tangdar here. On their side, you have Nila Valley. There are 50 to 100 hardcore jihadis who are dying to in, be infiltrated into JNK because the window is very short. They will end after some time. What we have to worry about, though we have deployed Heron drones, we have deployed 20, MiG-29s, we have deployed Prelai and all other things. What we have to worry about in this kind of things, we might have issues immediately being propped up from China's side. Remember, there is a mullah which is running Pakistani army. Mullah Asim Munir, Hafiz the Quran, that is his Sayyid. He says Sayyid Hafiz Asim Munir. That is his full identity. He's a full-fledged mullah. He doesn't only have a beard. 
so that hindu hatred that india hatred that gazwai hind is a concept which lives as long as and as and when they get money they will come for gazwai hind look people have been coming to india for gazwai hind for since 13th century so don't go by pakistan has changed pakistan will never change this concept of jihad and gazwai hind will never change as and okay. when and whenever they get money they will come for it and that okay. is exactly okay pakistan. fair enough Major General Jee Dwedi, then you know, uh, you know, uh, there was rightfully Kuldeep could have rightfully mentioned that as the Palestinian cause gained gain steam, there are people across the globe who are coming protesting about the Israeli strikes on 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 the Palestinians. You know, uh, killing innocent people is what their argument has, that has been put forth against the Israeli onslaught on. on hamas and thereby and uh, you know a reaction that is coming in from from the palestinian deaths that are taking place uh, and then allowing for these protests to get more heated up uh, not just not just in europe or america but but uh, stray instances that have been witnessed in uh, in kerala say in tamil nadu uh, i don't i have not been able i have not heard any of such instance where uh, Kashmiris have been brought in. They are coming out in one small numbers or large numbers to back the Palestinian cause. Uh, but but could this be then an opportunity that could be seen by certain political parties, certain regional parties to foment trouble in the valley? Uh, absolutely, Mega. Pakistan has always at it, and they have always played uh, some kind of monkey on our back. and we need to be very very concerned about it because they will like to use this opportunity to kind of uh, you know stir up some kind of unrest or at least uh, some kind of instability because uh, the kashmir issue as i said earlier if it is resolved uh, pakistan will lose the trump card and so also china they want to keep it activated and they will take, go to any extent to ensure that uh, the kind of progress prosperity the kashmir is seeing today Uh, this is actually impeded, or if it is not uh, as act as a spoiler. So I think we need to be very concerned, not only militarily but more politically, that any inimical forces within our country they are kept in check. And today, the young people, not only in Kashmir, all across, we have realized that their goodness or their future lies in India's future. And therefore, I think I don't see any ground swell that is there. but nonetheless we need to be watch and watch and two things are very important please remember today we are in the era of information warfare information is being exploited and this is being exploited in palestine in uh, gaza and that's what you are seeing that today information warfare is actually the cutting edge of any pol- geopolitical situation and we need to be very aware that information warfare india must be on the front foot not only carrying out these military strikes that of course are going on we have a very strong posture today and pakistan realize it but we also must ensure okay. that diplomatically okay. fair enough fair enough we are on the front foot so so cool cool deep then you know uh, having governments across the globe uh, that uh, majorly are supporting at least the west is supporting israel in its strikes similarly uh, a similar expectation can be made by india when it comes to us and uk and other parts of europe it is uh, it is these peoples and organizations and bodies that are that are i don't know left leaning uh, whether it is about the palestinian cause or it is about uh, you know the quote and quote azad kashmir voices uh, in terms of the separatists spreading rumor mongering spreading about this false narrative goes uh have we have, would we be able to quell it the other idea over here is because hamas has started this war there is a new momentum that seems to be going where there are going to be large number of islamist nations that are going to utilize this prop as 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 a justification to then initiate war whether it is about kashmir or it is about israel you know already the voices have been raised in various islamic countries about uh, the strikes in gaza and the uh, uh, and pleading the cause of palestinians and these voices uh, pakistan will definitely try to utilize 
for uh, their own uh, in, uh, issues like Kashmir, which they want to ra raise at the international level and try to divert those voices uh, for Kashmir also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, club Palestine and Kashmir together. So that's the one of the reasons uh, that India has to be on alert and uh, we have to keep on uh, uh, briefing at diplomatic level also the mostly the Islamist countries about the Kashmir, the progress which it is making uh, after uh, the situation has returned to near normal and uh, make them aware about the designs of Pakistan to increase the activity on the border by infiltration and also try to call for protests through their, uh, uh, through their proxies in Kashmir whether it's politicians or separatists or uh, any other uh, category of people. So India has to play a very proactive role and plus the intelligence has to be of super nature so that any attempt to disturb peace in Kashmir, which has been obtained through real hard work by the security forces and other agencies, that is not given up. And, uh, and simultaneously, we have to be prepared for any retaliatory action against Pakistan, which makes them totally uh, 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 totally defunct as far as their capabilities in launching the terrorist strikes or launching the infiltration into India is concerned. Okay. So, me then quickly, 30 seconds before I wrap this up. Uh, India's action plan, uh, Indian government standing uh, steadfastly with Israel and its uh, fight against Hamas and Islamist terrorism. It's also in the same way talking about Islamist terrorism with Lashkar-e Taiba, Jaish-e Mohammed which is backed and propped by Pakistan and, and aiming towards Kashmir. You see, Omega Ji, there was a statement by Mr. Anthony Blinken two days back where he said, Mumbai, New York or, uh, you know, Tel Aviv cannot be attacked. He equated Hamas and lashkar e toiba together. So we have a big diplomatic win, wherein the, uh, you know, the Secretary of State of the United States of America is equating Mumbai attack with the attack on Israel, wherein lashkar e toiba is equated with Hamas. Now the distinctions are drawing the line, battle lines are drawing. Today we have confirmed until Harkatul Mujahideen from Bangladesh has infiltrated around 70 people into India from Nepal route and they are waiting for their instructions to do what they are supposed to do here. Now Pakistan has trained Hamas Kader, you know, 5,000 of them in Cherat, in KPK, in KPK, in Haripur, the paragliding training was given and 2,000 Pakistanis are already fighting in with Hamas. More than 1,000 has been killed. Pakistan's hand glove is in the war of Hamas and Pakistan will try to take the advantage and try to replicate the same model. Remember Israel, there was not an intrusion in Israel, there was an invasion in Israel. They were trying this model, can few thousand jihadis be pumped into and we have a rocket and drone attacks going on simultaneously and can you capture an area? That was the experiment which was being done by Israel. We have to be prepared for such eventuality. Only force can ensure peace. When it's a political moment, you do whatever you have to do politically. But when it comes to dealing with terrorists, jihadis, overworked ground workers, their facilitators, sympathizers and finances, you should be ruthless. You have to eliminate them. If we don't eliminate them, they will come for you. Okay. Israel, what happened in Israel is, is an awakening and it's a lesson for everybody. Hit them before they can hit you. That's uh, the only way of prevention. Okay, all right. Can you make a very small point? Uh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of positive uh, ground swell in Pakistan occupied Kashmir, India. And this we must exploit because today what we are seeing is that a lot of people in POK, in Gilgit, Baltistan, they want to join India and this movement must be exploited by India as they on the front foot. Mega. Absolutely. Uh, I'm out of time, but I thank all of you for joining me on the telecast. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.